Hello guys, uh, good day to all the future mechanical engineers. Today I'm going to discuss to you the simplified thermodynamic processes. So why do we have to understand the thermodynamic processes? Because as you all know, we commonly apply thermodynamic processes in the different power generation systems, such as when we're dealing with internal combustion engine, uh, gas turbines, uh, steam power generation, as well as the different uh, uh, other mechanical engineering systems such as in air conditioning systems, refrigeration systems, and so forth. So it's really important that we have a deeper understanding about the thermodynamic processes. So as I mentioned a while ago, most of us as mechanical engineering students, we commonly encounter the different kinds of thermodynamic cycles. Among, of, among these cycles are the Carnot cycle, the auto cycle, the diesel cycle, and the dual cycle, which is commonly applied for the internal combustion engine. Then we have Ericsson cycle, the Eric Sterling cycle, which are regeneration cycles, and we also have the Brayton cycle, which is the idealized cycle for gas turbine. Now, most of the time, when we encounter such kind of cycles, we really find it difficult to deal with, simply because, aside from we don't know what's really happening in the cycle or what are the processes that occurs in the cycle is we don't have uh, knowledge about or a deeper understanding about the different thermodynamic processes that occurs in each cycle. So how are we going to deal with this? So the key is we have to understand thermodynamic process. So what is a third thermodynamic process? From the word process, process entails change. So a thermodynamic process is simply the change in state from an initial condition to final condition. Say for example, you have water that is heated. So the water is at certain temperature, at certain initial pressure, and at certain initial volume. Now after the application of heat, Okay, obviously there will be a corresponding change in temperature, corresponding change in pressure, and corresponding change in volume depending on the condition that uh, we apply for the heating process. Say for example, the heating can be done in an isometric process or heating can be done in an isobaric process. Now, different conditions results to different uh, effects on the substance. Another is a thermodynamic process actually governs the energy transformation or conversion. Say, for example, uh, conversion of heat into work in a gas turbine or in a steam turbine. Or the transfer of heat such as heat addition or heat rejection from one system to another such as the heat rejection in the condenser. As you all know, most of the time we consider the condenser as an isobaric process similarly in, in a boiler, uh, we consider a boiler uh, uh, the, to, to process in a constant pressure process. So, there are different uh, uh, conditions that we have to meet in dealing with uh, different thermodynamic processes. Some of the thermodynamic processes that we usually encounter are the isothermal process, the isometric process, the isobaric process, the adiabatic process, which uh, when we say adiabatic process, it is a process where there is no heat involved. So neither uh, heat addition nor heat rejection of course. No. So, an adiabatic process could be reversible, irreversible, or isentalpic, or trotting process. But before we proceed with uh, the discussion about the thermodynamic processes, 
let me give you another trivia question. And the trivia question is, what do you call the amount of energy that is partially destroyed in every process? Maybe some of you already have an idea about uh, the answer to this question, but to those who doesn't have idea so far, uh, don't you worry because at the later part of the video, I will show you the answer. Now, uh, when you say thermodynamic process, fundamentally, it can be written into the general form. We call this polytropic process in which we can simply say that PV raised to N is equal to C. So as we all know, P is the pressure, V is the volume, N is a certain constant, and C is, we call it, proportionality constant or a constant. Now, what is the significance of N? Uh, N actually defines the process. Say, for example, N is equals to 1 for isothermal process, N equals to infinity for isometric process, N equals to 0 for isobaric process, N equals to K for isentropic process. However, these are just some of the possible values of N. There are instances that the values of N mainly depends on the actual process that occurs in the system. Okay, So there might be instances that the value of N is equal to 2 or any other values are possible. So... It is very important that when we're dealing with thermodynamic processes, we have to understand the relationship between these three properties such as the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. Now to understand the relationships between these three properties, okay, so mathematically, we can derive their relationships. So from the given uh, equation for polytropic process, PV raised to N is equal to C. We can say that P1B1 raised to N is equal to P2V2 raised to N, considering the process is from point 0.1 to point 0.2. Now, by applying ideal gas equation and the mixed gas law, okay, we have P1B1 over T1 is equal to P2 times V2 over T2. Now, if we're going to simplify the equation and try to determine the value of P1, so our P1 is actually equal to P2 V2 times T1 over B1 times T2. And then if we're going to substitute the value of P1 okay, to the previous equation, we will come up with this equation. So this is the value of P1 times B1 raised to N is equals to P2 times B2 raised to N. As we can see, both sides of the equations has P2. So mathematically, we can cancel out both of the, P, the P2 and come up with this simplified equation. So you have B1 raised to N divided by B1 is this one. And then since we have T2 here, we can uh, transpose it to the other side, so T2 all over T1 times V2 raised to N all over V2. Applying the rules of exponent, we can simply say that V1 raised to N minus 1 is equal to T2 over T1 times V2 raised to N minus 1. And then we can simplify it into this form. So you have V1 over B2 raised to N minus 1 is equals to T2 all over T1. So, this shows the relationship between the temperature and the volume. Take note that the temperature in this case should be absolute. Now, to determine the relationship between the temperature and the pressure, using this derived equation, and using the ideal gas equation, we can solve for B1 all over B2. And that is equals to P2 times V2. Okay, I'm sorry. That is equals to P2 times T1 
all over P1 times T2. And then if we're going to substitute the value of this B1 over B2 to this equation, so we will come up with this equation. So you have P2 over P1 times T1 over T2 raised to N minus 1 is equal to T2 over T1. And if we're going to simplify this equation, we have here, this one is actually equal to T1 raised to N minus 1 over T2 raised to N minus 1. And if we're going to transpose it to the other side of the equation, we will have T2 over T1 raised to N minus 1 times this term, T2 over T1, is equal to this term, T2 over P1 raised to N minus 1. Now, as you can see, the equation of T2 over T1 here is 1. Okay, so we can... Applying the rules of exponent, we can cancel out the 1 on this equation or exponent. So you have T2 over T1 raised to N is equals to P2 over P1 raised to N minus 1. Now in order to remove the exponent of T2 over T1 here, we can raise both terms, both sides of the equations into 1 over N. So that 1 over n times n is equal to 1, and n minus 1 times 1 over n is n minus 1 over n. So we will come up with this equation. So you have t2 over t1 is equal to p2 over p1 raised to n minus 1 over n. Okay, to combine all this relationship, so these are the relationships between the temperature and the volume, and the temperature and the pressure. Now, you may wonder what is the relationship between the pressure and the volume. Now take note that using this equation, we can simply say that the relationship between the pressure and the volume is P1 times B1 raised to N is equals to P2 times B2 raised to N. Or P2 over P1 is equals to B1 over B2 raised to N. Now, in dealing with the different thermodynamic processes, some of uh, important things that you have to understand or we're going to use are the following. So the concept of the non-flow work. So as we all know, the non-flow work is equal to the integral of PDB. For the steady flow work, that is equal to negative integral of VDP, the change in enthalpy, so that is equals to the integral of M times specific heat capacity at constant pressure times dt. Then for the change in internal energy, we have that is integral of M times specific heat capacity at constant volume process times dt. The change in entropy is actually the equal to the integral of the differential heat all over T or the heat transferred all over T. And then for the heat transferred, that is simply equal to the change in internal energy plus the non-flow work. Or that can also be equal to the integral of the absolute temperature times the differential entropy. Now, going back to non-flow work. So, considering process 1 to 2, so the non-flow work for a polytropic process can be derived as follows. So, take note that the equation for the polytropic process is PV raised to N is equal to C, or we can simply say that P is equal to C all over B raised to N, or C times V raised to negative N. And then substituting the value to the equation for the non-flow work, so we can say that you have integral of C times V raised to negative N dV, and considering the limit from initial condition 1 to final condition 2, and in integration, we can easily... Uh, bring out the constant on the integrand. So you have uh, the integral of V raised to negative N dV limit is 1 to 2. And by applying the rules of integration, so you have non-flow work is simply equal to C times V raised to negative N plus 1. Limit is from 1 to 2 all over negative N plus 1. 
and then distributing the value of c and using the limits so you have the limit of the process so you have c times v2 raised to negative n plus 1 which is the upper limit minus the lower limit which is c times v1 raised to negative n plus 1 all over negative n plus 1 and substituting the value of c take note that c is equals to pv raised to n so since we have v2 raised to negative n plus 1 we can say that c is equals to p2 times v2 raised to n and the other term we have v1 raised to negative n plus 1 and substitute the value of c which is also equal to p1 this one p1 times v1 raised to n Okay, and multiplied by this value taken from here, that is V1 raised to negative N plus 1 all over negative N plus 1. Now, as you can see, by the rules of exponent, we can combine the exponent of this term and this term. So, you have N minus N is cancelled out. So, the exponent of V2 here will become 1. Similarly, for V1, you have N minus N. So, they will cancel out and you already have here the exponent of V1 is equal to 1. So, we can come up with this equation. So, the non-flow work for a polytropic process is equals to P2, V2, minus P1, B1, over 1 minus N. Now, as we all know, by ideal gas equation, PV is also equal to MRT. So, it means that P2B2 is equals to MRT2, and P1B1 is equals to MRT1, all over 1 minus N. And then factoring out M and R, so you have MR times T2 minus T1 over 1 minus N. So those are the two equations, the two possible equations for solving non-flow work for any polytropic process aside from an N which is equals to 1. So it means that this formula cannot be used for an isothermal process because when we have n is equals to 1 so it means that our denominator for these equations is 0 and we we can't have that kind of value so the limitation again the limitation of this formula for the non-flow work is n should not be equal to 1 for the steady flow work so as we all know, the steady flow work is equal to the negative integral of BDP in considering the process as 1 to 2. Okay? And then going back to the equation for the polytropic, you have process, you have PB raised to N is equal to C. Or we can simply say that V is equal to C all over P raised to 1 over N. Or this can all be simplified into C raised to 1 over N times P raised to negative 1 all over N. And then, applying the rules of integration, so you have this one is the value of V, and uh, factoring out the constant, negative C raised to 1 over N, times the integral of P raised to negative 1 over N, dP. Applying the rules of integration, so the, we will come up with steady flow work is equals to negative c times v raised to negative 1 over n plus 1 all over negative 1 all over n plus 1. Limit is from 1 to 2. Now, if we're going to substitute the value of the limits, so you have this one is for the upper limit and this one is for the lower limit. And we're going to distribute, sorry, this should be c raised to 1 over n. We're going to distribute the constant, so all over negative 1 over n plus 1. So, again, substituting the value of C raised to 1 over N, the value of C raised to 1 over N is equal to V2 times P2 raised to 1 over N since we have here P2 raised to negative N plus 1. Since we have here P1 which is negative 1 over N plus 1, we can substitute the value for CN is B1 times P1 raised to 1 over N all over negative 1 over N plus 1. Again, if we're going to apply the rules of exponent for the exponents of P2 and P1, we have here 1 over n minus 1 over n is cancelled out, and 1 over n minus 1 over n will also cancel out. So it means that we will only have P2, negative P2, V2 minus P1, B1, 
and negative 1 over n plus 1 can be simplified into this form n minus 1 over n or if we're going to apply the rules of algebra so we will come up with negative n all over n minus 1 times p2 minus p1 b1 and then applying the, the, the equation for the ideal gas you have pb equals to mrt so p2 b2 is equal to mrt2 and p1 b1 is equal to mrt1 so the steady flow work therefore is equal to negative n all over n minus 1 times mr times t2 minus t1 so th these are the two possible equations for the steady flow work Again, this equation can only be used when n is not equal to 1. So now let's try to apply those equations in dealing with uh, the thermodynamic processes. Again, as I mentioned a while ago, we cannot use the equation for the non-flow work and for the steady flow work when n equals to 1. So we will start with an isometric process. So what is an isometric process? An isometric process means a constant volume process. So an isometric process is sometimes called isochoric or an isovolumetric process. Commonly, we encounter isometric process in the heat addition or heat rejection in several thermodynamic cycles such as in auto cycle, Atkinson cycle, also the heat rejection processes in the diesel and the dual cycle. Now, uh, based from uh, Charles Law, so Charles Law said, said that whenever you held the volume of an ideal gas constant, the relationship between the pressure and temperature are directly proportional. It means that as you increase the pressure, there is a corresponding increase in temperature or vice versa. As you increase the temperature, there is a corresponding increase in the pressure. Now, one of the important tools when dealing with thermodynamic processes is the use of the PB and the TS diagram. So, as we all know, the PB diagram will show us the non flow work, while the TS diagram will show us the heat added. Okay. Now, since we're talking about an isometric process, it only means that the volume at point 1 is equal to the volume at point 2. And we only have here a vertical line. Okay, in this case, our point 1 has a pressure lower than the pressure at point 2. However, there might be other cases where the initial pressure is higher than the final pressure. Okay. As you can see, the PB diagram does not show any area. So it means that there will be no non-flow work in an isometric process. Now, again... As I mentioned, if you increase the pressure, there's also a corresponding increase in temperature. And that is shown here in the TS diagram. So, as you can see, the TS diagram, in the TS diagram, it shows that there's actually a corresponding heat transferred. And that is what we're going to determine in an isometric process. What amount of heat is being transferred to the medium? Again, Using the general relationships between the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. So these are the two derived, uh, these are the derived equations for uh, the pressure, volume, and temperature relationship. And as we all know, for the isometric process, n is equals to infinity. Now using this equation, so you have T2 over T1 is equals to B1 over B2 raised to the infinity minus 1. In order to simplify this equation, okay, we can raise both sides of this equation to 1 all over infinity minus 1 in order to cancel out the value of infinity minus 1 here. 
So we can simply say that V1 all over V2 is equals to T2 all over T1 raised to 1 all over infinity minus 1. 1 all over infinity minus 1 is a very small number. It actually approaches 0. So if we're going to raise T2 over T1 to 0, which is actually the value of this, that value is equal to 1 since, as you all know, any value raised to 0 is equal to 1. So it only means that our V1 is equal to V2. Now for the temperature and pressure relationship, we have T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1 raised to N minus 1 over N, which is actually taken from, from here. Now in then substituting the value, you have T2 over T1 is equal to infinity minus 1 all over infinity. Infinity all over infinity, a very big number divided by also a very big number, and that is approaches 1. So it means that the relationship between the T2 over T1 is equal to P2 all over P1, considering that the value of this exponent is actually approaches 1. So these are the two, these are the relationships between the volume, the temperature, and the pressure. Now for the non-flow work, okay, the general equation are these two. And then if we're going to substitute the value of n, which is equals to infinity, so you have non-flow work is equals to m minus r all over 1 minus infinity times t2 minus t1. So if we're going to divide m by a very small number, which is 1 minus infinity, that is approximately equal to 0. Now, this term is almost equal to 0. Again, if you're going to divide MR by a very small number, it actually approaches 0. And therefore, the non-flow work is 0. For the steady flow work, this is the derived equation. So you have steady flow work is equal to negative n all over n minus 1 times mr times t2 minus t1. Now take note that n all over n minus 1, if we're going to substitute the value which is negative, infinity all over infinity minus 1. So infinity all over infinity minus 1 is almost equal to 0, approximately equal to 0. I'm uh, sorry, approximately equal to 1, this one. This is infinity all over infinity minus 1, approximately equal to 1, times negative 1. So you have negative 1 times mr times t2 minus t1. And you have here negative m r t2 minus mr t1. Now take note that mr t2 is also equal to p2 v2 and mr t1 is equal to p1 v1. Okay, but take note again that your V1 is equal to, sorry, this one should be equal to V2, which is also equal to V. So it means that steady flow work is equal to negative V times P2 minus P1. Okay, so V1 is equal to, sorry, it should be equal to V2 is equal to V, which is constant. So the non-flow work for the, the isometric process is equal to zero, while the steady flow work is simply equal to negative V times P2 minus P1, or negative V times delta P. For the change in internal energy, since there is actually a corresponding change in temperature, so that is just simply equal to MCV T2 minus T1. Take note, if we're talking about internal energy and enthalpy, the rule is it is a function of the change in temperature. So in, if in a process there is a corresponding change in temperature, just simply apply the basic equation for enthalpy and internal energy. So similarly, your enthalpy is simply equal to mcp t2 minus t1. For the heat transferred, we all know that heat transferred equals to delta u plus wn. And we said that in an isometric process, wn is equal to zero. So it means that your Q is simply equal to the change in internal energy. For the change in entropy, you have delta S equals to integral of PQ all over T. Now take note that our Q is equal to delta U in which delta U is equal to MCB dt. So dividing it by the absolute temperature T, so we'll come up with this equation. So you have delta S is equal to MCV times the integral of dt over T with respect uh, from point 1 to 2. 
So, the integral of dt over t is equals to ln of t. And applying the limit, you have delta s is simply equal to m times cv times ln of t2 over t1. Next is the isobaric process. So, an isobaric process is a constant pressure process or sometimes called isopiestic process. Now, where do we commonly encounter isobaric process? Isobaric process, most of the times, are encountered in the different thermodynamic cycles such as in Rankin cycles, Brayton cycle, heat addition processes in the diesel and the dual cycle. Now, again, by uh, Charles Law, it is said that when the pressure of an ideal gas is held constant, the volume varies directly with the temperature. So it means that whenever you increase the volume, there's also a corresponding increase in temperature or vice versa. An increase in temperature will result to the expansion of the ideal gas. Again, to show you the PV and the TS diagram, so we have here process 1 to 2, which is an isobaric process. We only have here horizontal lines. Unlike with the isometric process, we have the vertical line. So this is a horizontal line that shows P1 is plus to P2. However, it also shows that the volume at point 1 is smaller than the volume at point 2. It means that the gas actually expands. So there might be instances that the gas will actually contract. Okay. So in this case, we have the gas expands from volume 1 to volume 2. So again, since the volume is directly proportional to the temperature, so if there is an increase in volume, there must be also an increase in temperature. Now, the PV and the TS diagram shows us that this, there is actually a non-flow work and there is also a heat transfer. Now, the question is, how are we going to solve for the natural work and the heat transfer? Now, to show the relationship between the pressure, the volume, and the temperature using, again, the derived equations, this one. And as we all know, that for the isobaric process, n equals to 0. So, you have P2 over T1 is equals to V1 over V2 raised to 0 minus 1. Okay? And... Then we have here 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So B1 over B2 raised to negative 1 is also actually equal to V2 all over B1. So it only means that the relationship between T2 and V is equals to P2 over T1 is equals to V2 over V1. Now for the temperature and the pressure relationship, we have T2 over T1 is equal to P2 over P1 raised to N minus 1 over N. And then simplifying this in order to determine the value of P2 over P1 with respect to T2 over T1. So we can raise both sides of the equations into N all over N minus 1. So therefore, P2 over P1 is equal to T2 over T1 raised to 0. And any number raised to 0 is equal to 1. So we can simply say that P2 is equal to P1. Now, for the non-flow work, again, using these two equations, okay, you have n is equal to 0, and then substituting that to these equations, you have mr, 1 minus n, or 1 minus 0 is equal to t2 of, uh, times t2 over t1. So, the non-flow work is equal to mr times t2 minus t1, since 1 minus 0 is 1. So, it only means that your non-flow work is also equal to P2 V2 minus P1 V1. But take note, your P2 is actually equal to P1, which is actually equal to P. So therefore, the non-flow work is equal to P times V2 minus V1. For the steady flow work, using this equation, and then substituting the value of N, so the steady flow work is equal to negative 0 all over 1 minus 0 times MRT2 over T1. So any number multiplied by 0 is 0. It means that there is no steady flow work in an isobaric process. Okay, so the change in internal energy, again, since there is a change in temperature, because there is uh, the relationship between the volume and the temperature are directly proportional, so... 
we have a change in temperature, so we just simply use the formula for the change in internal energy, the change in enthalpy. Now for the heat transferred, we all know that the heat transferred is because the delta U plus WN. So you have this. Delta U is MCB dt plus not flow work is equal to PDV. However, integral of PDV is also actually equal to MR times the integral of dt. So the integral of PDV is actually equal to this integral, MR times integral of dt. Now as you can see, both the mass and the integral of dt are constant. So we have, we can factor it out. So you have the mass times this constant. So you have Q is equal to M times CV plus R times the integral of dt. Limit is from 1 to 2. So in thermodynamics, we all know that specific heat capacity at constant volume plus specific gas constant is actually equal to specific heat capacity at constant pressure. So therefore, Q is equal to MCP T2 minus T1, which is similar to this. So therefore, the heat transferred is also equal to the change in enthalpy. Okay? Well, the change in entropy, again, using the equation, so you have this one, MCP dt, so divide it by absolute temperature t, so you have your delta S equals to M times CP ln of t2 over t1. Next is for the isentropic process. So an isentropic process is a constant entropy process. So an isentropic process is sometimes called reversible adiabatic process. Now, commonly, we encounter reversible adiabatic process in dealing with ideal cycles such as Encarnot cycle, Brayton cycle, Otto cycle, Diesel cycle, Dual cycle, and Nantan cycle. So, most of the time, we encounter this in the compression or expansion of gases in the different cycles. Now, to show you the PV and the TS diagram, so this is how it looks like. So you have here a volume at point 1 is larger than the volume at point 2, but there is also a corresponding increase in pressure. Now since there is an increase in pressure and decrease in volume, so there is a corresponding increase in temperature. So the TS diagram will only show us a vertical line since your S1 is equal to S2. So it is clear here that there should be no heat added and that is the definition of an adiabatic process or heat transfer. In an adiabatic process, take note that there is no heat involved, no, neither heat loss or heat gain. Okay, so we only have here work. So to show you the general relationship between the pressure, the volume, and the temperature, again using this equations that we have derived a while ago, so you have N is equals to K, so therefore, so just replace N by K. And for the non-flow work and for the steady flow work, take note that these are the two formulas for the non-flow work and then substituting the value of K. So you have non-flow work is equals to MR over K minus 1 times T1 minus T2. Now take note that R all over K minus 1 is actually CV. So therefore the non-flow work is simply equal to MCV T1 minus T2. Now, since MCV T1 minus T2 is actually the negative of the change in internal energy, while the steady flow work using this equation and then substituting the value, so you have, will come up with this, negative K all over K minus 1 times R M times R times T2 minus T1. Now, take note that R times K all over K minus 1 is CP. So, therefore, the steady flow work is simply equal to negative MCP T2 minus T1, or simply equal to negative delta H. So for the change in internal energy, again, the TS diagram shows us that there is actually change in internal energy. So therefore, you have MCB T2 minus T1, and that is also equal to negative non-flow work, while delta H is MCP T2 minus T1, which is actually equal to negative steady flow work. 
Now, for the heat transferred, you have Q is equals to delta U plus WN. But again, your delta U is equals to negative WN. And then, therefore, when you substitute it to the equation, you have negative WN plus WN. Your Q is equals to zero. And it is shown in the TS diagram that in an, in an isentropic process, Q is equals to zero. For the change in entropy, we have delta S equals to the integral of dQ all over T. Now, as we all know, your Q is equal to 0, so therefore the delta S is equal to 0 because that is isentropic process. Okay? So, that's all about the three process, processes. You may wonder why, why did I not include the, uh, the, the, the isothermal process simply because, as we all know, the equation for the non-flow work and for the steady flow work should n should not be equal to one. So later on, I will I will discuss a separate a separate discussion of the isothermal process. But for the meantime, let us try to solve uh, an example or a sample problem. So in this problem, uh, I did not use any of the processes that I have discussed: uh, the isometric, isobaric, or the isentropic. Instead, I choose a process in which n is equals to 2. So just to show you that we can use those formulas as long as n is not equal to 1. So I have here 2 kilograms of air with initial temperature and pressure of 27 degrees Celsius and 101 kilopascal undergo a process described by PV raised to 2 is equal to C. So and then determine the following if the final temperature is 270 degrees Celsius. So, first you have pressure and the volume at 0.2, then non-flow work, steady flow work, the change in internal energy, the change in enthalpy, the heat transferred, and the change in entropy. So, you have the following given. So, the mass is 2 kilograms. The initial temperature is 27 plus 273. Take note that the temperature must always be absolute. That is 300 Kelvin. And then you have initial pressure of 101 kilopascal and a final temperature of 270, converting it to the absolute unit, you have 543 Kelvin. And then, it is clear that N is equal to 2. So, uh, since the gas that is mentioned is air, so as you all know, the specific gas constant of air is 0.287. The specific capacity at uh, constant pressure is 1.0062 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Then K is equal to 1.4, so CV is simply equal to 0.7187 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Now, for the solution, we're going to use these relationships. This is actually the relationship that we have derived a while ago. So, for the pressure, we're given the final and initial temperature as well as the final pressure. And just simply substituting the values for each uh, terms. So we can come up with P2 is equal to 330.89. While for the initial volume, we can use the ideal gas equation MRT. So you have initial volume is MRT1 over P1. And then substituting the values, we will come up with B1 is equal to 1.705 cubic meter. So, using the relationship between the temperature and the volume, okay, so the one that we derived a while ago, so we can say that V2 is simply equal to 0.942 cubic meter. Now, for B, for the non-flow work, again, using the equation that we derived for the non-flow work, you have WN is equal to MR over 1 minus N times T2 minus T1. So, substituting the value, we have the non-flow work is negative 139.48 kilojoules. What does it mean by negative work? Negative work means work is done to the system. Why? As you can see, there is actually a decrease in volumes. It means that there is actually an external work applied to compress the gas from its initial volume to the final volume. For the steady flow work, so using the formula that we derived, so and then substituting the value, we have the steady flow work is negative 278.96 kilojoules. Now for the change in internal energy, since there is a change in temperature, so we can expect that the 
formula for delta u is simply mcb times t2 minus t1 and then substituting the value it will give us 349.29 kilojoules and for the change in enthalpy substituting all the values from the given formula so you have 489.01 kilojoules for the heat transferred we have q is equal to delta u plus wn as we all know that delta u is 349.29 while the non-flow work is negative 139.48 so so adding the two will give us a value of 209.8 now the challenge is for the change in entropy as we all know the change in entropy is simply equal to the diff the heat transferred all over t while the heat transferred is equal to delta u plus wn and delta u is equal to mcb dt while the non-flow work is mr over 1 minus n dt and then dividing it by the absolute temperature t so it will give us this one so you have mcv times the integral of dt over t limit is from 1 to 2 plus mr over 1 minus n times the integral of dt over t limit is from 1 to 2 now as you can see the integral dt over t is common to both of the terms so we can factor out mcv plus mr over 1 minus n and the integral of dt over t is ln of t2 over t1 and then substituting all the given values so your delta s is equals to 0.5123 so you may try it using your calculator now what if i give you this problem so you have almost same problem aside from n is equals to square root of 2 and you're going to solve for the following so exactly the same given aside from the value of n so you may try it using your calculator and hopefully you will come up with this answers okay for the the final pressure and volume you have the uh, non-flow work then the steady flow work uh, then the uh, change in internal energy the change in enthalpy the heat, uh, heat transferred and the change in entropy so please try uh, using the formulas that we have and then try if you can come up with these values now <clears throat> I will now proceed to the isothermal process. I did not include this to the previous uh, discussion since, as we all know, the limitations of the formula that we derived for the non-flow work and for the steady flow work is n should not be equal to 1. However, isothermal process is as important as the other processes. So an isothermal process is simply a constant temperature process. So, where do we commonly encounter heat isothermal process? All of us have already encountered Carnot cycle. And as we all know, Carnot cycle is composed of two reversible adiabatic processes and two isothermal processes. And those processes are heat addition and heat rejection processes. So, the general relationships between the pressure and uh, the volume and the temperature. So, again... You have T2 over T1 is equals to N minus 1 or B1 over B2 raised to N minus 1 equals to P2 over P1 raised to N minus 1 over N. And then as you all know in an isothermal process, N is equals to 1. If you're going to substitute the values, the value of N, you have T2 over T1 is equals to B1 over B2 raised to N minus 1 which is 1 minus 1. And it will give us B1 over B2 raised to 0. And any number raised to 0 is equal to 1. So it means that T2 is equal to T1 because obviously this one is an isothermal process. Now again, substituting the value for P1 B1 raised to 1 is equal to P2 V2 raised to 1. So it only means that P1 B1 is equal to P2 B2. So this only shows the application of Boyle's Law. According to Boyle's Law, whenever you held the uh, temperature of an ideal gas constant the pressure varies inversely with its volume so it only means that the corresponding increase in pressure will result to a decrease in volume so that can be shown in this PBNTS diagram so volume 1 is greater than volume 2 
So the then the pressure at point 2 is larger than the pressure at point 1. So you can also have vice versa. There might be instances that the initial volume is larger than the final volume. So that is expansion. So whenever a gas expands in an isothermal process, there is a uh, corresponding decrease in pressure such as in pressure relief bulbs. So whenever you release the pressure, so uh, and considering the volume of the gas inside the vessel is held constant, so there is uh, there is corresponding increase a uh, decrease in pressure. And you have here a TS diagram that shows a horizontal line. So uh, since T1 is equals to T2, so it is clearly shown in the PV and the TS diagram that we both have non-flow work and we have the heat transfer. Now for the non-flow work, using the non-flow work equation, which is equal to integral of PdB, and then uh, we said that uh, P is equal to C all over B, or C is equal to uh, or P is equal to C times B raised to negative one, and that can be substituted to the formula. You have W n is equal to C times the integral of V raised to negative one dV, and V raised to negative one dV can be written dV all over B. So, if you get the integral of dB over B, that is ln of B. That is limit from 1 to 2. And then, substituting the value, again, by rules of algebra, you have C ln of B2 minus ln of B1. And by, by, by the loss of uh, natural logarithm, ln of B2 minus ln of B1 can be written as ln of B2 all over B1. And substituting the value of C, which is PV. Now, take note that PV could be equal to P1B1 or equal to P2B2. However, PV is also equal to MRT. So, therefore, the non-flow work is this equation. For the steady flow work, applying the same procedure. Okay, so this time your V is equal to C all over P or that can be written C times P raised to negative 1 dP. Integral of that and then P raised to negative 1 dP can be written to dP all over P. And the integral of dP over P is also ln of P. So by same concept, you have negative C ln of P to over P1. Now since you have your negative, in order to convert this into positive, we just have to get the reciprocal of the term inside the natural logarithm. So it becomes C is equals ln of P1 all over P2. So therefore, you will come up with this equation. PB ln of P1 over P2, MRT ln of P1 over P2. Now take note that the relationship between the pressure and the volume are inversely proportional. So we can simply say that P1 over P2 is also equal to V2 over B1. So when you substitute the value of V2 over B1 from P1 over P2, it will show us that the steady flow work is simply equal to the non-flow work. Now, take note that this is only true for the isothermal process. For the change in, in internal energy, since the internal energy and the change in internal energy is a function of change in temperature, and there is no corresponding change in temperature, so the change in internal energy is zero, and similar to the change in enthalpy. So they are both a function of change in temperature, so there is no change in enthalpy. Now, for the heat transfer, Okay, that is sum of the internal energy, the change in internal energy plus the non-flow work. But since we don't have intern change in internal energy, so heat transferred is just simply equal to Wn. And for the change in entropy, so you have here integral of dq over t. Now take note that q is equal to pv ln of b2 over b1 divided by the absolute value of t. So you have pv over t is actually equal to mr. So, therefore, the change in entropy is simply equal to MR ln of P1 over P2 or MR ln of B2 over B1. So, that's about thermodynamic processes. Okay, hopefully you learned something. Uh, hopefully I, I was able to simplify uh, 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 the problems in dealing with the different thermodynamic processes. So next time when you encounter a, a, a different thermodynamic process aside from the processes that I have discussed here, you just have to use the formula or the simplified formula for the non-flow work and the steady flow work. And the simplified formula for the relationship between the pressure, volume, and the temperature. Now one more thing that we have to understand in, the dealing, with, in dealing with the different thermodynamic processes is 
uh, commonly these thermodynamic processes that I have discussed is used for uh, ideal gases. Uh, now uh, the challenge is uh, we also have to to understand the different properties of the different ideal gases that we commonly use, especially in the field of mechanical engineering. And some of these gases or are water, so in the form of steam, we have air. Of oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons is just simply the combination of carbon and uh, hydrogen, so such as methane, butane, propane, pentane, and so on and so forth. And we also have sometimes argon and helium. Okay, so that's all about thermodynamic processes. Now, before we end, uh, the video let us go back to the trivia question so again this one is your trivia question so hopefully uh, you are now able to answer the problem or the question but if not okay so the correct answer is exergy okay so exergy is actually a form of energy okay exergy is the maximum output or energy or work that can be obtained from the system as it reaches equilibrium with the surroundings. So this is uh, one also of the fundamental uh, concepts that we have to understand in thermodynamics. So I will discuss more about exergy on my next video. So that ends my presentation. Bye-bye!